All right, we're live. Uh, Tina, thank you for joining the Pulling Focus podcast. We're Happy really, to be here. Yeah, really excited to have you. Uh, you come from Bristol's AI, uh, and I'm really excited to learn a little bit more. Uh, we were talking just, just a little bit before this, mm-hmm. how I might actually be one of your target customers. Yes. Uh, excited which, about that. Which might be a first <laughs> out of all the podca- podcast guests. Um, but let's start mm-hmm. off just quick intro, um, what Bristles AI is, and yeah. then we'll go from there. Yeah. So Bristles AI, we're a startup here in Durham, and we are building an AI-powered design app for furniture refinishers and home DIYers. Um, where we're starting. So with our app, you can build mock-ups of your ideas before diving into the work. And so it gives you an opportunity to plan, test different paint colors, hardware updates, things like that, before actually diving in and doing all the sanding and the painting Mm -hmm. and the work. So is part of it um, instructional? Like, uh, we can dive a little bit more into this, but I have tried to, like, do the furniture flipping thing where I bought... um, I bought like a, a table and wanted to refinish it. And the people on Instagram make it look so easy mm-hmm. and so cool. But like I learned there's all the different sanding you need to do and um, different layers of paint. Is that is that part of it, like instructing you on how to do? So the instructing piece, not so much. So if you've done furniture flipping, when you were doing it, was your goal to sell it to someone? Yes. To, yes. to make some side money. So a lot of our customers are like that. Mm-hmm. And what they struggle with is the design aspect of flipping the piece. So they have, you have one piece, right? It, mm-hmm. There's no template for it. It looks a certain way. It has constraints. Yep. And you can paint it any paint color. You can salvage the hardware. You mm-hmm. can update the hardware. And so there are all of these aesthetic decisions that they... They want to play around with their own ideas to test what will look better than another option. They also want to get buy-in from potential sellers. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. So I don't know where you worked on your piece. Was it was it in your garage? It, uh, it's, it started in my shed, and then I needed more space. And so it moved to my garage and right. moved to my driveway. So, so three different so, locations. So you understand then their perspective where they can only work on one piece at a time. Mm-hmm. So it's really important to make the right decision before diving into the sanding, the painting, the the uh, the clear paint you put on top of the, of the first paint yeah. base mm-hmm. paint coat. Um, it's a lot of work. And so if they make the wrong decisions, then list it on Facebook Marketplace, it doesn't sell, uh, then it just sits in their garage. They can't work on the next yep. piece. So it's really important for them to try to get buy-in from folks about their design mm-hmm. ideas so they can be really sure they should make those decisions about paint, hardware, mm-hmm. and then they get started. And then in some cases, they even pre-sell the piece. So oh, they create cool. the mock-up yeah. in our app. You can export it as a photo, and then you you basically sell it before doing the work. So you get that approval beforehand. That was one of my questions was uh, if there is an, there's like the ability to sell um, based on the design and then fulfill the kind of the order. Mm-hmm. Um, that is an interesting problem where the inventory itself takes up such a large amount of space that mm-hmm. um, you might not be able to have 30 different items. It could be like five. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I was also going to ask was, um, do you see your, your users um, – you know, while they're sourcing, so maybe they are at a flea market, for example, and they mm-hmm. see a bunch of old pieces of furniture. Uh, one of them looks like it could have potential. Can they pull the app out right there and just start making mm-hmm. small little edits just to see the potential? Yeah. So we actually made an update in the app. Uh, we added an AI idea generator for that exact purpose. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, it's designed to be this quick decision maker helper. So you're at th- the thrift store, you can pull out the Bristles app, take a photo of that piece you're looking at, tap this light bulb button, mm-hmm. um, and it generates ideas for you. And then you can kind of say, I like this one, I don't like this one, and our AI tunes to your t- design tastes. Um, so then the next ideas you generate will be closer to what you want. And you can kind of make that decision. Should I buy this right now or eh, no? That's interesting. What about, uh, what about cost? So one of the things I learned, and I mean, 
also I'm just thinking about like my house. Like I've we've di- DIY'd like almost everything um, in terms of like the projects we've done in our house, and mm-hmm. I've learned that there's such a a range of prices when it comes to hardware or when it comes to paint. Like some paint can be really expensive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is is the app giving kind of an insight into that or? Is the market that you are serving these um, designers and folks that are, are refinishing this furniture, do they kind of already know that so you don't have to tell them? Um, so kind of part the next part we're working on is introducing products that our customers are interested in buying. What's interesting about our app is it's all photo editing mm-hmm. technology, um, generative AI based on images, but the, the actual real world use cases, they all involve someone buying materials, buying tools. Mm -hmm. So the next piece will be helping you realize that vision by connecting you to products. So Mm -hmm. we're looking to partner with brands and offer our our app users special deals, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, But in terms of budgeting, we don't help with that at this time, perhaps in the future. That makes sense. Um, The other question I had was, this makes me think about kitchen cabinets this Mm -hmm. makes me think about um even like the design of of rooms how much does it dip into those areas and how much of it is focused on like standalone furniture pieces like a table or Mm -hmm. a chair or something like that Mm -hmm. so it's it's both so um for example when you upload a photo if you tap on that ideas button the first thing the app will ask you is is this furniture or are you ref- refreshing a space? If you choose space, then you can choose what type of room it is. So if it's kitchen, then it'll, it'll spin out ideas mm-hmm. um, for updating your cabinets and things like that. That's neat. So mm. have there been any users, well, actually, just to back up, how long has the app been out for? So we released it in the Apple App Store mid-March okay. and uh, in Google Play mid-April. Okay, so relatively relatively new. Mm-hmm. That's really exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, Have there been any users of the app that you have either been surprised by the use case? You're like, oh, I I didn't think of that, but this person's using it for this thing. Um, Or someone who's just using it in a a different way than what most people are using it for? Mm, That's a good question. Um, Yes. So, well, I see a lot of, I thought there would be more of a split. Everyone that's Mm -hmm. doing kind of furniture ideas would um, focused mostly on furniture, but we really see a mix Mm -hmm. because when you think about furniture, it's really just a concentrated, uh, use case in a home, within a home. So that was one thing that surprised me. It wasn't, some people do interior, some people do furniture. It's really a mix. That makes sense. Um, yeah, we've had, we've had a couple guests who have, specifically the first two guests we had on the podcast, they talked about the importance of listening to their users. Mm -hmm. So, and, and they also have been in their roles for a while um, and at big established companies. And it's exciting with you being a part of a startup um, and launching this app in the past couple months. Mm -hmm. Um, How have you been able to, just get feedback from mm-hmm. users? Do you have like a core group that you are interviewing? How are you just making sure that the idea is connecting with the, mm-hmm. the use cases? Yeah, that's a good question. When we got started, um, before we launched in the app stores, we were a web app. And um, when we first launched that, it was a very kind of clunky version, ver- version one of our tool. Mm-hmm. Um, we set out to find people to interview because talking to customers was a really important thing for us to know we're on the right the right track. Um, so at that time, we set out to find people to interview, and we started posting videos of our app on Instagram um, and got hundreds of DIYers and oh, furniture cool. refinishers to sign up to do a video interview with me. And so that's how I've gotten to know the DIY community to understand their needs, um, and we've kind of catered our app to to meet those needs. And now we've ha- we have um, kind of a following on Instagram from the DIY community. So every time we post a new feature, 
anytime someone has app feedback, a lot of the time they reach out to me on Instagram and ask questions. Oh, cool. So, um, and they're very vocal. So I hear a lot of feedback <laughs> and um, I'm really fortunate actually, because it helps guide us. So there, there are influencers on Instagram that are specifically for furniture DIY. Yep. Um, from a marketing and advertising standpoint, have you initiated any conversations about kind of leveraging them and their audience and yeah, promoting? Yeah, so, so a lot of them have been kind enough to just share about us for free because they love the product. Um, we haven't done any sponsored deals or anything like that yet, but uh, many folks have reached out to us asking. Um, so we'll we'll think more about that and and see what we can do. As a small startup, um, we don't have a ton of marketing capacity, so sure. we're trying to be sure. um, creative with yeah. our marketing. Yeah, I mean, and it, it's it sounds really smart to be communicating with the influencers on the platform that they're using all mm -hmm. the time. Um, yeah, so even back when it was a web app and even before that when you had this concept, um, what advice would you give uh, Tina from then, knowing what you know now? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, let's see, what would I tell Tina from back then? Um, I think any feedback is really, really good. Sometimes when you're the one you know, building something and kind of taking feedback and when it's negative, you can take it personally at first. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would tell my past self to try to separate myself from um, from taking negative feedback personally, because it's all helping you make a better product. Yeah, that's good advice. I think that's good advice just in general too. It, feedback is is difficult. The one of the guests we had on, um, Jeff from Lenovo, was talking about uh, coaching and people mm -hmm. just the benefit of even being young and being on a, a sports team. Mm -hmm. Uh, being coached and getting feedback of mm -hmm. how you can improve and how you can do better is is really good to be introduced to early on mm -hmm. um, because it's not necessarily saying what you've done is bad or you're bad. It, it's like a desire for you to like get better. Mm -hmm. um, and so I could see how like some feedback um, could be toward, like especially with a product, like mm -hmm. it could mm -hmm. it, it could be motivated out of wanting the product to be better because yeah. they want to use it yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. what have been some of the, the most difficult parts uh for you like what has been difficult you know operating a, a startup and um you know building i know building an app is is something that is time consuming expensive uh difficult the first iteration is not it's, it's not done it's gonna mm -hmm. like keep improving so mm -hmm. what's been what's been the hardest part i think the hardest part has been balancing everything in order to push forward on multiple areas at the same time. So um, one thing that I didn't have a ton of experience doing, for example, is selling an app, marketing an mm. app. And so all of this is a learning process. You have to make process on the marketing funnel. You have to make prog progress, continuous progress on the product. Mm -hmm. And just being able to balance all of those things and keep pushing at the same time. And how big is the team? It's just me and my co-founder right now. Okay. Um, so just two people. Two people. But we just onboarded uh, three part-time creators to oh, help fun. with content creation. And, and they're awesome. Really excited to have them on the team. That is exciting. Um, I've asked this to a couple people. And I think, I think we live in a... I think we live in a unique... I don't know. Us being from the same area in Northern Virginia. Yeah. Um, I think we would agree that that is different from Raleigh mm -hmm. and there's similarities to, to Raleigh in some aspects as well. Um, but I do feel like from everyone I've talked to and have asked this question to, I've gotten different answers uh, and I'm, in, I'm curious to hear yours, but what what is like the biggest benefit of operating in the triangle? And, uh, you know, if you were to encourage another 
uh, person starting a company to start it here, what would what would you say? Mm -hmm. I haven't gotten to know the startup community in in DC or Virginia, mm -hmm. but I have gotten to know the community here, and everyone is just so supportive. Mm -hmm. um, you have entrepreneurial leaders helping uh, first time founders like me, uh, and they dedicate so much time. For example, um, one of our key advisors is Scott Wingo, and he's mm -hmm. been involved since Spiffy, Sp um, Spiffy? CEO yeah. of Spiffy, yeah. and he's done a million yeah, other all things. All the other things, yeah. <laughs> um, but he has been advising us since January 2022, and he's been keeping up with us, and his advice has been invaluable, mm. um, guiding us through being, especially being a first-time founder, it's been super helpful. Um, and not just him, there are, there are folks that are just constantly reaching out to check in um, to get us, you know, press opportunities like mm -hmm. this. And um, yeah, I just feel like there's this constant ask for what help do you need? We're here for you. And that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed that too. I mean, there's a, I think, I think it's like a, a slower pace here. Like I think things are getting done quickly and things are growing here qu quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but it it's not this feeling of everything is this frantic rush. Um, it probably feels mm -hmm. like it may be a little bit more with, <laughs> yeah. for you, like st mm -hmm. having a startup and like there's two of you on your team and there's so much going on. But I think like the general ecosystem feels like things are, um, like people are, are giving time to have a conversation uh, like this or meet you for coffee or um, people are are not, you know, packing their day full of things that they don't need to be a part of. I mean, I've seen people just guard time well too. And I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that's the case everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I, I like asking that that question. Um, and, and I think, on the flip side of the one I asked before that, what what has been the most rewarding part? Like what has been exciting and, and rewarding for you? About building bristles? Yeah. Um, I think just seeing it come to fruition in all its phases. Mm -hmm. um, when we first built the web app, released it, that was really exciting. But then every kind of iterative thing, you build on it and you present the next version of the app, gets the excitement just builds in this exponential way. Mm -hmm. um, and the reward also builds in the same way. It's a very unique experience, I think, for a founder, j just to build something and, and see it come to life. Um, I think that's been the most rewarding piece of it. And then for me personally, I have um, an engineering technical background but I've always been very interested in art. Um, and so being able to kind of inject more creativity into my everyday career has been super rewarding too. That sounds rewarding, yeah. And I just, I wonder like, um, like what your house looks like. Like have you used, <laughs> have you used the app on any oh my projects of, of well, your own? So we've planned a lot of projects. We still have to do a lot of yeah. the work. Um, so one project I always talk about planning with Bristles is um, these built-in shelves mm -hmm. that we've been trying to do for a long time. And um, we've decided on the paint color now. Mm -hmm. we have, we've have we started working on it. The shelves are, cu are cut. The shelves are um, sitting on our coffee table right now. But the next step is uh, putting them into place. Yeah, and built-ins, <laughs> built yeah. like I know from experience, like, yeah, that's it's got to be perfect. It's got to yeah. be measured. So, um, well, great. the the final The final question I have is, what's on the horizon? What's next? Um, how can people be kind of tracking with bristles and um, mm -hmm. you know what what I guess is happening in the next six to twelve months that's exciting for you? Mm -hmm. We are continuously making updates to our app and it's available in the Apple App Store and in Google Play. So anyone with a smartphone, iPhone or Android can go try it out. Um, we offer free trials, so it's a non-commitment, mm -hmm. try it for free and then if you like it, subscribe mm -hmm. type of thing. Um, and then um, over the next 
six to 12 months, we are kind of just pushing on, on um, growing the app. We're doing a little bit of fundraising locally. Sure. Um, so introductions to angel investors would be nice if there's anyone listening. Um, mm-hmm. Well, great. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, and of course, the new content uh, the part-time content people you're onboarding. That's really exciting as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it sounds like there's a really cool market for this. Um, and you've already started to, to have really great conversations with the people in, in your audiences. Um, so if somebody does want to get in touch with you or your co-founder or, um, bristles in general, how should they do that? Yeah. If you go to our website at bristles.ai, there is a contact us button that links to our email. Um, So that's the best way. Reach out on LinkedIn um, or or my email um, or or email. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, Tina, thank you so much for for your time uh, joining us on another episode of the Pulling Focus podcast. Uh, And uh, folks, if you're interested in anything we chatted about today, uh, feel free to check out the app. uh, Contact bristles at bristles.ai. Uh, And I hope you have a, a great rest of your day. Thanks for having me. This was great. Awesome.